Greetings, saints. Pastor Lane here with another encouraging word. Uh, I just want to, first of all, say I just thank God for his goodness and his mercy. Uh, seeing us through a terrible bout of COVID, and granted, I didn't have to go in the hospital. I wasn't on oxygen. I wasn't on a ventilator. So it wasn't terrible as some people have had to go through it, uh, but it wasn't a joke. And there are those that, that go through a very mild case of it and and they could see it as a joke. And I believe that sometimes it's the same way we deal with life. We go through a, a minor battle that is in a parallel with somebody else who's gone through a great battle and something similar. And we can see how they just claim that God was just there for them. And, and when they went through a great battle, they're so thankful and those that went through a lesser version of that same battle don't seem to have that same level of thanksgiving or appreciation for God carrying them through because it was lesser of a battle. And I believe that sometimes we take our personal feelings and interject them into situations that can cause us to lose the value of God involved in our lives. And I, I just want to challenge that. Because we need him no matter what. We need him in every situation. We need him in everything. And if we, we view our circumstances as less than somebody else's and, and take away from, from their thankfulness, take away from their appreciation of God because you went through something similar that wasn't that big of a deal and you, you honestly begin to think that you could have done it without him. And maybe that's true. But what are you going to do when you need him? And that faith is not there. I'll never forget what uh, a brother, George Koshy, told me. Uh, this is a great man of God from India who started eight Bible colleges in India, which is a feat unto itself. But brother George Koshy looked at me when I was explaining to him about some circumstances that were just terrible that a family was going through. And he looked at me and said, Brother Lane, a faith that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. And so there are going to be times in our lives where our faith gets tested. And you say, but why would God test us? Have you ever gone through any educational process whatsoever? You, you go through school taking tests and those tests prove that you're teachable. And I believe that God allows us to go through things in life not to test our weaknesses. That's what the enemy does. But to test our strengths to make us stronger. And so as we go through life, we're going to be tested. But it's not to tear us down. It's, we ask God, why am I going through this? God says, I use all things and turn all things together for the good of those who love me and trust me and are called by me. And so whenever we go through the trials of life, we must take a stand on faith, trusting that God will turn all things together for the good. That's faith. And you say, well, Pastor Lena, what is faith? It's not some imaginary mental grasping of something, hoping that it might be true. Faith is an absolute knowing. You know that you know that you know that you know. And I'll prove it. If you are born again, just think back when you accepted that Jesus took your sins on his back. When you ask him to cover your sins with the blood of Jesus to wash away all your unrighteousness through his cleansing flow. When that moment happened, when you place your absolute trust in that, the weight of your sin fell off of you. When you stood on faith in the power of Jesus Christ and him crucified, the weight of sin that you could not get off your heart was lifted. But you have to believe. You have to have faith. It needs to be absolute in your life. 
And so it brings me to what I want to say today. All of that is to, to lay a platform. The Word says in James, If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally, and, and abradeth not. So in other words, he will never say, Stop asking. He will never say that. God will never say to you, stop asking me for wisdom. He won't. He will never do that. But whenever you ask, ask in faith, absolutely trusting that he will give it. Because if you're not asking in faith, then there's still, well, I don't know if he's going to give it. And there's some doubt and there's some reservations and there's some wonderings. And then you start evaluating what you're asking according to other people's situations and their circumstances. And, and so you're not asking in faith. You're not assured in your heart and mind that he's going to give it. And here's what the word says. Let him ask in faith because he who doubts is like a wave tossed to and fro in the sea. And then he makes this incredible statement. Let not that person believe that they're going to receive anything from the Lord. Whatever is not of faith is sin. And so if you're not placing your absolute trust that God can and will give you the wisdom that you need, when you ask for it in Jesus' name, if you don't believe, you just say, well, the pastor says, so I'm going to give it a try. That's not faith. You can't go to God in my faith. God has no nieces and no nephews. He has sons and he has daughters. That's it. So you have to believe that, God, I'm asking you for wisdom concerning this, and I trust that you're going to give it to me and step out. Whether you've gotten it or not, you step out in faith, knowing, not hoping, knowing that he's going to give it to you, and he will. His word is true. He's not a man that he would lie. So this whole aspect and mindset of, but what if you don't really know? and What if you're not really sure? The scripture says, if you consider yourself to be a believer and you don't have faith, the absolute assurance that you know that you know that he's going to get, if you're not asking in faith, then you're not going to get it. You say, but Pastor Lane, you can't say that. It's not me saying it. It's the Word of God. So I'm challenging the subtlety of the enemy and causing you to allow unbelief in your heart and then get frustrated with God because he's not coming through. When the Scripture clearly says, let not that person think. I'm going to say it in, in more modern terms. Don't allow them to think that they're going to receive anything from me if they don't believe. The scripture says, as your faith is, so be it unto you. So I'm challenging unbelief. I'm challenging doubt. It's like dirt clinging to a white garment. It looks filthy because it is filthy. Rid yourself of that filth of unbelief and step into faith and allow Christ to cleanse your heart and in the same vein that you receive Christ, receive the wisdom that you need with absolute assurance, knowing that not only can he, but he will give you the wisdom you need and then step out in that truth and watch God come through. He's never failed and he never will. So I want to tell you why this is an encouraging word. Because it absolutely discourages the grip of unforgiveness that's keeping your blessing away from you. You need to see it for what it is and rid your life of all fear, doubt, and unbelief and trust that his word is true. Just like you trust that the blood of Jesus is what cleanses you of sin. By his stripes we were healed. His word literally says, if God did not withhold his only son, but freely offered him to us for our salvation, how much more will he through Christ freely give us all things? So saints, I'm speaking to you concerning the wisdom that you need. Ask in faith. 
and trust that he's going to come through. And he will. Every time. Do you receive that? All I just did was lift up faith. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Others will see the faith and the wisdom that you're operating in. But it's not yours. It's his because you believe. And he will come through and answer. He always does. Do you believe that today? Do you receive that today? I believe that God's going to bring you to a different place in your walk with him. Amen? Let me pray for you. Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, I just thank you for your goodness and mercy. I thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us of all unrighteousness. Lord God, we take our thoughts captive and cast down every hint of unbelief and fear and doubt. Every bit of it is cast down. We trust your word. We trust your spirit. We trust who you are, God. So, Father, I thank you that today, wherever wisdom's needed, it would be cried out for, not with fear, doubt, and unbelief, but in absolute faith of who you are, that you will bring your word to pass. Father, we praise you and thank you for it on this week before Thanksgiving. And, Father, we love you. We praise you. We honor you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pray that you receive this word. In fact, give a link to somebody so that they can hear it. They might need it as well. And we just thank God for you. Amen. God bless you. We're going to see you all next time.